Psych, I'm on a green screen. <laughs> Scrivener is the most powerful creative writing tool on the market, more so than Microsoft Word, more so than Campfire, more so than Google Docs. Scrivener is the creative writing king, but some writers open up that generous free trial and they feel overwhelmed at the learning curve. Look, I've been using Scrivener for six years and I love it, but I also totally get feeling overwhelmed. But that ends today. I'm gonna show you the three levels of using Scrivener. Now I'm using the Mac OS version here, but it should be fairly similar with Windows. Level one, the total beginner. This is for writers who just want to use Scrivener's text editor and writing tools. Level two, the emerging writer. This is for writers who want to use the hidden features in Scrivener for planning, developing, and editing your story. And level three, the full stack writer. This is for writers who want to use all the aspects of Scrivener from drafting all the way to publishing. By the end of this video, you will be able to use Scrivener like a pro, like me. There are tons of features, but these are the absolutely necessary ones. If you want to pick up Scrivener, check out the link below and support this channel at no extra cost to you. In a world of subscriptions, we should support products like Scrivener that are one-time purchases, like it used to be. Check it out, $60 and you have it for life. All right, let's get started. Level one. <laughs> Level one. Uh, at the core of any good writing software, there are two main questions. How do you plan your story and how do you just write your story? When you open up a new project in Scrivener, you'll see a couple different things. At the top of the screen is your toolbar. On the left side of <laughs> your pro <laughs> on the left side are your project folders where we'll organize your story. And depending on what you have selected at the time, the main section of your screen will show you different things. In the project folders, there are three main sections. You have the manuscript, you have the front matter, and you have your planning material. Your manuscript is the content of your story. This would be what is in the book if you were to print it. Right clicking on the manuscript will let you add folders or pages. If you look at the project for my latest book, and yes, this is the real project, I've organized my story with these folders. And these folders could serve as chapters, but you can also just use them to organize your story. The folder itself is not what makes a chapter. That's done in a later step in compiling, and we'll look at that in more detail in a more advanced video. But of course, my preferred method here is to use folders as chapters, and every scene within that chapter is separated by a scene break. Uh, it looks like this. That should give you an idea for what the story might look like in sort of the final results. If you want to read through a part of your manuscript without clicking through every single scene, select everything you want to read and click on the Scrivenings button right here. This will append all of the content together into one long document. You can scroll through, you can read it, it's all great. When writing, you have access to all of the standard formatting tools, including comments and formatting, and my favorite, the distraction-free writing mode. Use these settings below to tailor the writing mode to your own tastes and hit escape to exit out. The next main section of the project folder is the front matter, and this is just used for either pre-pending or appending, appending, not appending, uh, content when you're compiling your final story. This is for your copyright page or your about the author page. That's it. More on that when we compile our story in another video. And then lastly, we have this entire set of folders for planning and organizing your story. None of the content by default in here is used for compiling. It's not gonna be in the final product of your book. Instead, these folders are just here to give you a place to organize and plan things. You can add characters and locations. You can paste in images. You can even upload entire web pages for reference, even when you're working offline and you need to reference that information later. I do this with Wikipedia pages and even plot frameworks all the time. If you need space for some other kind of planning folder, like a whole folder for plot stuff, or detailed world building. 
just right click and add a new one. This is your sandbox. Shape it best for how your brain works. And if you just want to plan and write a story, this is all you need. Organization, powerful text editors, and a space for planning. But Scrivener can do so much more. Level two. Level two. <laughs> Level two. Does that show up well on camera? <laughs> Scrivener is a mature piece of software. The first version of Scrivener was released in 2007, almost 20 years ago. And there are tons of awesome features that are just hidden behind menus. For example, naming a character is such an important part of your story. Did you know that Scrivener has a whole name generator loaded with thousands of names from different cultures? And you can even upload your own data sets if you really wanted to. Check out what kind of names you want to generate and then just go for it. And did you know that Scrivener keeps track of every time you write in your project and gives you a writing history for that project? You can look back and see exactly how many words you wrote on each day or each month separated out from your planning and your actual manuscript words. There are tons of little features like this. You can also set and track writing goals with this button here. Use this to keep track of your overall project progress and your daily writing goals. But of course, that's not like the real valuable part of Scrivener. One of the most valuable parts of Scrivener that you might not be using is the side panel. And if you select a scene or a folder from your manuscript, you'll see a panel of information on the side of the screen. This includes a synopsis of the scene and notes. The synopsis is a summary of your scene that you can view in other places in Scrivener, like the outline view or the note card view. The notes field is incredibly useful, highly recommend it. When I know I need to make edits or changes to a scene, especially as I'm writing and I know it can still be improved, I'll write those changes in the notes. And then when I compile my manuscript for editing, I can tell Scrivener to add those notes to each scene or chapter for easy reference as I'm reading back my manuscript. This is also where you can view snapshots, more on that later. You might often find yourself referencing other documents while you write. These could be character notes, location notes, or even other scenes that you've already written in your story. You can right click on any item of your project to open it in a side view and quick reference or in copy holder, which I still can't really quite figure out what that does. This kind of thing also happens a good bit in Scrivener. You find a feature and you're just looking at it, wondering what the point is. Oh well. <laughs> By the way, there's also an entire manual for Scrivener hidden up here. Read at your own leisure. <laughs> it also has keyboard shortcuts, but there's more on that in level three. So you've got all the tools that you need for drafting, but let's talk editing. And this is where first I recommend that you use snapshots. You can highlight your manuscript, select documents, snapshots, and take titled snapshots of selected documents. Whew. And this will allow you to use that version control that we talked about while also giving those snapshots a clear title. Otherwise, the snapshots would just be titled with a time and date. I use this in my last book to take snapshots before each new round of editing. If you ever need to roll back to a previous version, select the snapshot and click roll back. How about that? It'll restore your scene to that old snapshot version. So you always can go back to how your story used to be before you made some sort of changes. And you can also use compare to view the changes between old and new versions. I don't know when you need that, but it's there. Speaking of editing, make sure to use revision mode. Select format, revision mode, and you can cycle through the different revisions as you edit. Simply put, this just changes the color of your words to highlight uh, what has gone through editing. As you type new things, it's in this new color, woo. For non-destructive editing, you wanna get used to highlighting text you want to remove and striking through that text and then using revision mode to type in new stuff. Later, we'll use some text tidying to clean things up. Uh, also, a simple checkbox in compiling will make sure that your revision text appears normal in the final output so you don't have a bunch of red or blue text in your book, which makes sense. Combining the tools in Scrivener with a more robust editing tool like ProWritingAid is a powerful pairing, highly recommend. 
Using these tips means that Scrivener becomes a full, complete writing tool. It takes you from planning to drafting to editing and beyond. So what comes next? Level three, put an explosion behind me real fast. All right, we're here, the full stack writer. Here are some tips to get that absolute most out of Scrivener. If you can do everything else mentioned in this video already, now we're getting into that power user territory. For example, hop into the project settings and configure custom autocomplete functionality for complex or difficult names. I'm looking at you sci-fi and fantasy writers, I know what you're up to. Command one, two, and three will quickly switch between the main views of Scrivener. Option Command F toggles the distraction-free writing view, and that's my most used shortcut. Option Command N creates a new folder, and Command N creates a new text in that folder. You can use these to quickly move from one scene to the next without even having to touch the mouse. Gross. Why would I touch the mouse? Gross. If you figured out your favorite plot frameworks or character sheets or any sort of standardization to the writing process, you can hit the ground running by creating a project template. Some people use this in really powerful ways like creating the entire Save the Cat beat sheet in your manuscript folders or grabbing your favorite writing resources and inspirations and putting them in a folder to look back on. Configure a project into that starting point that you want and then save as a template and you can even share it online for others. Wow. You like the jazz hands? <laughs> uh, when you have a project nearing completion, I recommend using the text tidying tools in Scrivener to avoid any unforeseen hiccups later in the process. Select part of your manuscript, highlight everything with Command A, and then select Edit, Text, Tidying, and use these tools to clean up text. This will eliminate issues with spaces, extra lines, white, spaces, is that what it's called? And a lot of hidden characters that are there as a result of typing in a rich text editor. And then we get to compiling. Probably the scariest uh, part of writing in Scrivener. Put a jump scare behind me. <laughs> Did that scare you? Uh, if you found, <laughs> look, compiling is its whole own video. If you found this guide helpful, let me know below. I'll need to do another video for compiling. Uh, but if you want more content like this, breaking down writing tools, I love stuff like this, uh, let me know. Ask questions down below, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, follow for more writing content, not just writing tool stuff, but also like how to write. Uh, and then, yeah, also I went to Alaska to finish my book uh, that I'm writing. You can see that super cool video here. Go check it out.